Hello, Eagles fans. I'm Chris McPherson, joined by the talented Judy Batista from NFL Network and NFL Media as we're going to break down the behind-the-scenes success of how the Eagles got to the Super Bowl as we continue our coverage here from Super Bowl 52 in Minneapolis. And, Judy, I want to start with Howie Roseman because not only – was he able to get the quarterback in Carson Wentz, but he built a team so deep that it was able to survive all the injuries from Carson Wentz and Jason Peters, and all the Eagles fans know about it. How impressed have you been by the work that he's done in the last couple of years to take around, take a roster that was decimated by Chip Kelly and be able to get it to a Super Bowl caliber level? Well, just sort of think about the arc of Howie, <laughs> right? Yeah. The Howie arc. Um, basically on the outs, you know, I mean, not really in control. And and then he comes back around and is back in his old job and has done a remarkable job. You mentioned the depth, and to me that is, I mean, yes, the Carson Wentz, you know, and the trade to get up to Carson Wentz is, is, the, is the headline move. But to me, getting all that depth is the really tough job of a personnel guy. It, like, analyzing those sort of, you know, mid-roster guys, collecting them, having them in place, they had so many injuries. You know, I live in New York, and so I'm at Eagles games a lot, and I felt like every time I was at an Eagles game, there was, like, a devastating injury, and you're like, okay, well, that's... Are you the Reaper? That's it. I yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was that way for the Cowboys a few years ago. I was I was at, like, the game when Tony Romo got hurt, and then Jason Witten, and I was like, I'm really sorry. Like, oh, my God. We're not. Please. But, um, yeah. You know the but, audience um, here. Eagles fans yeah. are like, wait, Judy, can we bring you back around <laughs> to Dallas more often? So. But I just felt like week after week there would be an injury, and you think, like, my God, they can't possibly keep going. And then, of course, Carson gets hurt. And you're like, well, okay, now this is really it. Um, so I think that when you credit Howie, you have to the, – the depth is what really impresses me, that, that you're able to collect these guys um, and, and prepare for moments like that that most teams simply can't survive. No. Um, at, look, and I think if they pull it off on Sunday, that's what you have to point to is the depth of that roster. I'm even more intrigued by how – not even, like, the free agency and draft moves that he made, but – you look during training camp, preseason, he gets Ronald Darby yeah. from the Bills. Jay Ajayi Lots of movement. Lots he, of he kept it Constant. going. Yeah. Where, whereas Constant. most teams might say, all right, once we get to training camp, no. this is who we're rolling with. The 53 that come out of this will be our team. How we never seem to well, settle. You know, look, we talk about that a lot with the Patriots. It just so happens that Belichick is constantly churning the roster, right? They're constantly turning people over. They're constantly trying to get a, a guy for a job. You hear that for the Patriots a lot. That's basically what the Eagles did, right? I mean, Howie kept looking, kept looking to improve the roster. They weren't always headline moves. A lot of them are the kind of moves that, you know, get like one inch in a newspaper. I mean, it's just guys you don't hear of exactly. until they are thrust into like, the spotlight. you know, the yeah. moment where they have to perform. Uh, he deserves a ton of credit, really. He does. And, and again, uh, the whole arc of his story over the last few years is pretty amazing. Have you ever seen anything like that in the league? I mean, you see guys who leave mm. one team and maybe have success somewhere else, but you don't rarely see it. Yeah. You rarely see it with someone coming back to the same organization and making it Yeah, happen. very unusual to be in a top spot, then sort of get exiled out of the top spot, and then reassume the top spot in such short order. I mean, let's face it, it hasn't been that many years. No. Um, and then have to rebuild the team completely and then have it all come together so fast. So credit to them. And, and look, credit to Howie, certainly. Obviously, credit to Doug Peterson and credit to them for selecting Doug Peterson because I think, let's face it, a lot of us in the national media were like, really? Um, you know, is this really the right head coach? There were a lot of, fa there were a lot of fans. A lot of fans. I mean, uh, you know, certainly. there was a lot of skepticism about, like, are you, sh like, really? You don't want somebody with more experience, maybe? And. Um, what sold you on him? So in the two years, I mean, we've seen the success yeah, on the well, field, but is there something about him that you've witnessed behind the scenes covering many Eagles games that make you say? Oh, I think his, look, I think his play calling has been especially, look, last week, the way they, like, loosened the reins on, on Nick Foles, I mean, I think caught a lot of us, we were like, wow, okay, yeah. in the NFC Championship game, that's gutsy to do it. Uh, it worked. I, he called a great game in that game. I, I think... You know, his, his play calling ability. I mean, look, I think we knew that he would be able to develop quarterbacks. I mean, that's what he does. So that part doesn't surprise you. But I think his actual in-game execution, you see so many first-time head coaches in the NFL fail at that. 
fail spectacularly at that. You see experienced coaches so, fail at that. It's tough. Because it's not just about it's, coaching. No, it's That's just the there's thing. so much. It's chaos down there. Clock management. How many coaches do you see, you know, just screw up clock management over and over again? Um, so I give him, he, he deserves a great deal of credit for coming in, developing the quarterbacks, yes, but just, uh, you know, presenting himself with a great deal of confidence and, and calling a great game. Judy, you've covered the league for a long time. Jeffrey Lurie has been the owner since 95 mm -hmm. on a full-time basis. What are your thoughts on how he's run the Eagles organization, getting it to its second Super Bowl in franchise history, hopefully bringing home the first ever Lombardi trophy? He's kind of stayed out of the spotlight. You know, when you compare himself to, like, Robert Kraft or Jerry Jones. Right. So what are your thoughts of how Jeffrey Lurie has run the organization and operate within the NFL circles in his time as owner? You know, Robert Kraft was asked about Jeff Lurie last night at Media Night, and um, he made the point, like, yeah, he may not be, like, sort of one of the spotlight owners that all the fans Certainly. know about, but that he's, like, influential behind the scenes with other owners, which, of course, is what really matters to them. Um I, I think he has. I think he his profile is elevating. He was particularly outspoken on the national anthem uh, situation this year. Of course, you know Malcolm Jenkins and Chris Long on the Eagles were prominent players involved. Of course, and I think he really s sort of stepped forward um, and became one of the most uh, out front owners on that topic and one of the owners that the league sort of looked to for guidance, like which way do we go on this? What should we do here? So I think he is, you know, inching a little bit more out into the spotlight. I'm not sure he's ever going to be a Jerry Jones type because I don't know if anybody is. No. Um, but I think he's sort of asserting himself a little bit more in ownership circles. Judy, as we look forward to Sunday, what's the under-the-radar storyline that you're most looking forward to following? Well, let me give you the over-the-radar storyline. Over and that radar. is, and that's, you know, what's Rob Gronkowski going to be like because he still hasn't been cleared. So let's start with the big one. Yes. But look, I, I mean, I, I want to see if that defense – as spectacular as it is, this is the kind of defense that in the past has gotten to Tom Brady and has made things really tough on the Patriots. We saw the Giants do it twice in the Super Bowl. This is They've got the personnel to do it. Can they do it? Judy Batista does phenomenal work for NFL Network and NFL Media. Make sure to check out her work and make sure to stay tuned for more continuing coverage of here from the Super Bowl in Minneapolis. I'm Chris McPherson. Thanks for joining us and have a great Eagles Day.